Hey everyone, welcome back to week three for PSAT 5A. Today we'll be going over several examples. The first 3.1 is just some basic rules of counting. So in 5A, you'll commonly see an example where you have to come up with combinations of either selecting letters or rearranging letters from a given set of letters. Now, this could also be objects, not necessarily letters. So let's look at this first example. We have eight letters that form the word computer. And the first question is how many ways can we arrange all eight letters? So what I'm gonna key in on is this word arrange which for me implies that the order is important. Because if I switch places of the two letters, for example, the T and the E, and then I have an E and a T, well, those are different arrangements. Now we do have a counting rule, but I like to look at it a little bit more graphically, meaning I've got eight positions that I have to fill in. And I want to arrange them in a way that counts all the different arrangements. So I just go one at a time and I identify how many different choices do I have per slot and then use my counting rule of multiplication to find the final answer. So for the first position, since I don't necessarily care what letter it is, I've got any of my eight letters that I can plug in. And since that one letter is used up, there are only seven left. And then now I've used up two letters, so now there are six letters left. And again, I'm using my multiplication principle. So then I just go through this string where every position has one fewer choice. And the calculation ends up being eight factorial, which is just this string over here on the left, eight times seven, all the way down to one. If I plug that in my calculator, I get 40,320. Now, another way to look at the exact same problem is understanding that order is important. I can use a counting rule that looks like this, NPK. So the P represents permutations where I do care about the order. The N is the total number I have. The K is the number that I'm going to permute. So in this case, we have eight total letters. We're gonna rearrange all eight of them. And then I just use the formula from lecture that looks like this. Now it looks a little weird. I've got zero factorial in the denominator, but by definition, zero factorial equals one. So let me highlight that over here. So here's a definition, zero factorial is one. So that means that I get the exact same answer as above. All right, in the example below, very, very similar. Now we have a restriction. So again, we're gonna highlight that this says arrange all eight, but now I have a restriction that it ends in a vowel. So very similarly, I can start off with eight positions. And I can do this one of two ways. One is let's just think about the vowels that we have in the word computer. And so that could be the O, it could be the U, it could be the E. So one sequence of letters I have could potentially end in the letter E. And what I wanna go through is now just count how many remaining letters I have to choose. So if I want the word to end with E, well now I only have seven letters and six and five and so on. And that's because the E is already being used. And if I follow this logic, I can do the same thing. But now the word could also end in the letter U. And if that's the case, I have the same string. The U is used up, but I still have seven remaining letters, six, five, and so on. And very similarly, you can see that the trend would continue for this last one here for the letter O, and then I still have the same string over here of seven factorial. So another way to think about this is I've got seven factorial different ways I can rearrange seven letters, but since the restriction is it ends with a vowel, 
then I have three different choices for the vowels. And so for these counting examples, you can think of it as just rearranging letters, or you can map them out, which is my preferred method here. And again, punching this in the calculator, seven factorial times three, I end up with 15,120. Okay, in these next two examples, we have the same word, different question. The question now is how many ways can we select three letters? So I'm gonna highlight the word select and this means the order is not important. The reason being, let's say I choose the letters P, T and R as an example. Well, if I rearrange the order and just mix up the T and the R and the P here, I actually still have the same three letters. So the fact that they are in a different order, that doesn't really matter if the instructions are asking me to just select three letters. So that being said, we have this counting rule, N choose K that you've seen in lecture, where this counts for us number of ways to select K objects out of N. So what I have now is if I'm gonna select three out of the letters from the word computer, I've got eight total letters and I'm gonna see how many combinations of three can I come up with. And then I can plug this in the formula And when that's all said and done, use my calculator. And there are 56 groups of three that I could come up with from eight. The last part of example three, one here goes over the same components, but now there's again, an additional restriction. The restriction now is I have to select consonants. So when I go through the letters in the word computer, I notice there are five consonants. So that's C, M, P, T, and R. So to guarantee that I don't accidentally pick any vowels, I wanna make sure that this is my total pool of objects. And again, the word here is select, so I don't care about the order. So ultimately I've got five total objects I wanna choose from these five continents, and then I wanna select two of them. So plugging them into the same formula above, we get that counting rule. And my calculator tells me this is 10. And so so those, those are some different variations of just counting examples in 5A.